And he said, uh, uh, when the storm passed by, all I could think about was my two-year-old daughter with, that was at home with my grandmother. And he said, for the next mile and a half, my wife and I, we ran. And uh, he said, I smoked, and, and my lungs, I just couldn't run. My wife out ran in, and she got there first. And he said, all we could think, he, he kept thinking, well, it, it didn't get to our house, you know. The storm didn't go that far. He said, but as we kept running, the storm had gone that far. And their house was literally torn apart, just a couple of walls standing. In fact, where this little girl and grandmother was, they, the wall had come down in upon them, they, and yet they were able to pull the wall off of them. One of those great stories. He talked about praying and praying for safety and, and praying for uh, the Lord to be with them. His grandfather, let me share this with you. His grandfather, very wise man, he said, Son, you shouldn't have been praying for safety. He said, You should have been praying for the Lord to forgive your sins. Uh, to make sure your life is right. <laughs> and I thought, that's a pretty good grandpa there. He had a pretty good handle on things. A little later in the conversation, I said, Did you ever pray that prayer? He looked at me and he said, Well, what prayer are you talking about? <laughs> and I said, The prayer your grandpa mentioned to you. And so we had a great conversation about that. But as I stood there visiting with him, there were some things I could have been critical about. I mean, he had this t-shirt on that, well, let's just say we probably won't put that picture on the Sunday school room in the children's department. <laughs> um, opportunity to be critical. And yet, with the love of Christ leading, go other way and to wrap your arms around them. Extend the love that Jesus wants to extend. And family, I think it's time that we draw a line in the sand and say, never again. For you see, if we're believers in Jesus Christ, if the Lord has sanctified our heart through and through, this type of thinking, critical spirit, Fear that overwhelms us. You say, well, there's a good, there is a good fear, we understand. But fear that overwhelms us, that takes over, the, the discontentment that often we have. Let's just be honest. The reason we're discontented is because our citizenship is more in this world than in heaven. Let's just call it like it is. And when fear sweeps over us, do we really believe that the Lord has us in the palm of his hand? And when we allow the Lord, just as we sang about this morning, to cleanse our heart through and through, fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ, people who've become so much like Jesus, we talked about, talk about sanctification, entire sanctification, allowing the Lord to sanctify our hearts through and through, becoming more like Christ. These kind of thoughts can't be a part of our life. And when they are, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and stop right then and there and say, Lord, forgive me. I didn't want to go down that path. I'm going to keep my eyes upon you. Amen. Lethal thoughts. Not a part of Christ's followers' lives who are fully devoted to Him. And that's why, oh, the Lord's speaking to me in such a great way because it's easy to become critical. It's easy to allow, allow fear to sweep over. I join what Paul says. Sometimes I do what I don't want to do. And I catch myself there. And family, there is a better way than to live life with the toxic, lethal, poisonous ways in us. I love this illustration. I know it's silly, but I'm still going to use it. You do, do you know the difference between a hummingbird and a vulture? Do you know the hummingbird that... Uh, uh, flies forward and back. You, you know what hummingbirds are. The hummingbird, what does it try to find every day? Sweet stuff. Nectar. In fact, we have this little bird feeder on our back porch that uh, we put sugar water in. <laughs> and the hummingbirds will come in and they'll drink from it. Let me ask you, what do vultures look for every day? Yes. Dead things. That's, folks, um, not, never once have we ever hung a dead animal on our porch <laughs> for a vulture to come in. Now, a dead cat might be open. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Cat lovers, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> We've got a whole bunch of kittens in our... Well, never mind. <laughs> Thanks for turning me off there. That saved me a little bit. 
Are you searching for sweet things? Or would you rather be searching for the death, decaying, dying things? Lethal thoughts bring disaster into our lives. They lead to death. A battle that far too many people and too many Christians deal with. The Word of God makes it crystal clear that <laughs> Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, that we can have victory over this type of thinking. Amen. And that's possible, folks. It's time to stop blaming our personality or the circumstances of your past. It's time to, to stop blaming all of the things around you and saying, well, that's just who I am. That's my personality. Well, folks, that's not the personality of Christ. And when we allow the Lord to sanctify our heart through and through, just because your mama was critical doesn't mean you have to be critical. And we allow the Lord to change us by His blood, by the power that He makes available to each one of us to help us to become more like Him. And it's possible, folks. God has a better way. I don't want to live life like I used to. I want to live life the way that God has in store. Lethal thinking, that is unsanctified, carnal living. And it should not be. God has a better way for us. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I want my thoughts to be upon Christ. And it's time that we change thinking. And so how does that take place in our lives? Well, here's the good news, and I want to share it with you. Number one, we must guard our heart. That's right. We must guard our heart. Scripture says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. What is in our heart flows through. And so when we allow the fear or the worry or the discontentment or the critical thinking to flow through, folks, guess what's in your heart? Those things. The wellspring of our life says guard your heart. As Christians, we often talk about how we live our lives and we talk about holy living and especially within the church, we talk about what is pleasing unto the Lord. That's essential, folks. It's, it's how we live our life. However, we often focus on the externals of holy living. And are those things important? Yes, they are. We, we, we must live lives that are holy and pleasing unto the Lord. And oftentimes it, it is the externals that we see. You know, like be careful of the lies, what you see, and the entertainment that we put before us. We, we focus on it. And should we focus? Yes, it's essential. I don't want to fill my mind with trash. As a holy person, I want to fill my mind with the things of God. We talk about places that you can go and places that you can't go. And should we be wise in that? Well, I believe the Lord's given us common sense there and the Holy Spirit leads us. We should be wise in that. We talk about the words that we can use or the evil influences that we allow into our life. We've got to be careful about that. Then the Lord gives us direction, specific direction. These are all essential. However, Holy living, sanctified living, goes way beyond just the externals. It changes who we are on the inside. And I believe that God wants to give us victory, family. As mature followers in Him, even victory over the lethal thoughts that fill us. The blood of Jesus Christ... The Holy Spirit that fills us speaks directly to our hearts. It's time that we, church, we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us each and every day. And here's what has to take place. When negative thoughts come in, you say, Holy Spirit, thank you for pointing that out. I don't want to think that way. Help me to have a positive spirit. I don't want to be critical all of the time. When fearful thoughts come in, Holy Spirit, would you just help me become a person who trusts in you? It's that type of thinking, daily thinking that is transformed. When discontentment comes, Lord, forgive me. I didn't want to have my treasures on this earth. I want my treasures in heaven. And it's that kind of thinking that changes us. And we become people that are sweet to be around. And critical spirits, no more. It's not Christ-like. God has a better way for us. And we allow
about how to sanctify our hearts. And so, guard your heart, it says. If there's anything that's inconsistent with the character of Christ, His nature, Lord, would you drag those things out of my life and crucify them, slay them, do away with them? We simply allow the Lord to renew our mind. I couldn't preach a message like this without force to turn to Romans chapter 12. Verse 2 says this, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I love that. The Lord renews us. And we allow Him to renew our mind. It's very evident Paul he struggled with some of this thought, whole thought life. He wrote so many great words of encouragement for us. Let's turn to one more. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Listen to this. You say, it's not possible. I just can't do it. Well, folks, you can't. That's right. But with the strength of the Lord, the weapons, he writes, verse 4, chapter 10, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. We can't do this whole transformation on our own. It's not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, the weapons that we're able to fight with, they have divine power. I've shared this with you. The Greek word is dunamis. The power of God. It's where we get our word dynamite. As kids, we used to take these firecrackers and, you know, if one firecracker made a loud noise, and two would be better, and three, four, five, we'd take firecrackers, we'd take the fuses, and we'd wrap them together. We'd make one big firecracker. This is the kind of power that the Lord has in store for us. You mean you can live victorious living here in my thought life, the lethal thoughts that can... Folks, let's take those firecrackers and put them together and allow the power, the dunamis power of God to demolish the strongholds, it says. Verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And listen to this. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Captive every thought thought and we make it obedient to Christ. I can't think of a better definition of sanctification than right there. Becoming Christ-like. Practically thinking, here's what it looks like all week long, all month long, for the rest of our lives, when these thoughts come into your mind, with the power of God, the dunamis power, you take captive that thought. You say, well, have I sinned and have I just blown it? If that thought comes to mind, folks, no. <laughs> but we have opportunity right there to say, Lord, my life is in you. And here's the beauty. As you grow in the Lord, here's the beauty. From the moment that thought comes into your mind to the moment you say, Lord, it's your way, not my way, will become shorter and shorter and shorter as you mature as you grow in the ways of God, taking captive every thought. And so that leads us to our final application for today, that we're going to conquer God's, Satan's ways, and allow God's ways to lead us. So we must guard our heart, and then finally, we replace lethal thoughts with God's truths. And that takes us back to where we started, Philippians chapter 4. Verses 7 and 8. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, says this, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And Paul writes, again, we see that he struggled, but Paul writes, he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, praiseworthy, excellent, think on such things. And family, when we allow the Lord to change us, the lethal thoughts 